Can I uh, introduce myself first? I'm Carlos. I'm the newly appointed County Council Network spokesperson for education and young people. Um, but I'm also the leader of North Yorkshire County Council. We're delighted to be joined by Yvette Stanley, the National Director for Social Care at Ofsted. Earlier this year, North Yorkshire was the first authority to receive an outstanding grade in every category under a new and challenging social care inspection framework, which focuses on the effectiveness of frontline practice. We were clearly delighted to be the first local authority in the country to achieve this. But just as importantly, we're also very pleased by the changes that the new ILAX framework has brought. In doing that inspection, we noticed three things in particular that warrant attention today. Inspectors did exactly what the framework said they would do. They spent most of their time talking to our frontline staff and seeing the results on the ground. Inspectors also understood that at the heart of our practices was relationships. And finally, they also understood that we work with risk and we have to deal with that risk. Clearly, I believe that counties have a huge role to play in showing how great services thrive. I'm pleased to welcome Yvette, who is going to talk us through her reflections on the ILAX inspections one year in and how counties can help in creating the environment that great social work practice to thrive. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, we don't always get a warm welcome when we arrive, but I can see some smiley faces in the room. Um, so, as Carl says, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, um, the year to date and the building blocks for great social work practice to thrive. I know you have a particular interest in resources, but my um, argument will be if we can get the right service to the right child at the right time in a preventive way, then we're really making the best use of those very valuable resources in significantly challenging financial circumstances. So as Carl says, we launched ILAX last January and I joined in April, so it's my, been my job to make sure that practice on the ground is what we all signed up to in principle. And at ILAX Heart is that continuation of inspection through the lens of experience of children, um, building on the previous single inspection framework and its predecessors. Uh, but it has been some significant changes. We've moved from a four-yearly, four-week huge inspection um, into something that's more regular contact with a wider suite of tools. It's designed to be risk-based, proportionate, and an annual engagement meeting for all local authorities to discuss their self-evaluation of practice. This, alongside the data and the intelligence that we traditionally hold on all local authorities, helps us inform our risk assessment about what ILAC's tools to apply and their timing. So there are now shorter one-week inspections for authorities previously judged good or outstanding and a two-week standard inspection for those requiring improvement to be good or deemed inadequate. And we have the option of focus visits in between on specific areas of practice. The front door, or children on a plan, or children in proceedings, or looked after children and care leavers. But in this first year, the majority have been around um, the safeguarding in terms of the, um, the front door. Perhaps because we haven't been so often um, in, in some of those local authorities, it's for some local authorities three, almost four years, perhaps a little more since the last inspection, that that might change in terms of the future. And together, together that combination of, of ILAC's tools is intended to support and challenge you on your improvement journey and to identify and catch those who are not improving before things in deteriorate. The main focus of both visits and inspection is, however, as Carl said, on that frontline practice, delivering positive change for children and families. So we've shifted our evaluation of leadership to the impact of leaders on social work practice with children and families. And we want the inspections to assist you on your improvement journeys. So you will find, as Carl did, that 80% of the inspector's time is with frontline practitioners and their managers discussing children and families. So in the first 12 months of ILAX, we completed 30 inspections. And during 2018, we'll have completed 120 ILAX activities in 12 months. So just checking you're all still with me. Hands up who's had an Ofsted visit over the last year. 
We are getting round and about well, aren't we? So that's um, eight short inspections, 22 standard inspections, and 66 focus visits, as well as regular monitoring visits to those who are deemed inadequate. And it is good news, colleagues. About 60% of local authorities have improved their grading through the ILEX process, and the proportion moving out of the inadequate category at reinspection is similar, with three local authorities making the very significant move from inadequate to good, and a huge well done to Barnsley, Rotherham, and West Berkshire. For absolute clarity, this is not a lowered bar, and we're using the same grade descriptors, and local authorities have fed back that it's tough as fair. Is it tough and fair? <laughs> a very short answer from a politician, so well done. <laughs> um, we've found inadequacy in inspection and we've named it. And on focus visits and on our joint targeted inspections, where there are widespread concerns, we can include areas for priority action so that local authorities are aware what needs to be improved with pace. And where we do so, the DFE will follow up with the local authority in terms of ministerial expectations. But for us, the important thing is the smart improvement plan so that we can then target our next ILAX visit um, accordingly. And that just takes you through those different profiles um, and the responses to authorities across the continuum. So the state of nation is improving. We've reduced the number of inadequate, the percentage of inadequate local authorities from 22% to 14%. We've got a similar proportion, 43% uh, RI, which was the same at the um, end of, of the SIF inspection. But good, good has gone up from 34 to 38%, and we've doubled the number of outstanding from 2% to 4%. It is an improving picture, and you should, yes, someone at the front cheered. <laughs> Children's service is a good news story, but there's still some way to go to ensure the vast majority are good or better. Um, the really good news is that we've seen local authorities using their previous inspection framework and their outcome, their self-evaluation, and really motoring on that improvement journey. And we now have six outstanding authorities. So that means 33,000 fewer children in need and 6,000 fewer looked-after children in authorities that are inadequate. It is a good news story, Tori, particularly given, I know the, the flavour of your conference, the challenge of that growing demographic, growing need, and reducing budgets. And a special mention to North Yorkshire, who remain the only authority who've got um, outstanding across the board um, at the ILAX inspection. So... I'm not going to go through all of these. I've covered them. I've, done, I've covered them broadly, but I put them up there so that you've got them to go away in case you want to disseminate the detail to um, your colleagues. What are the key building blocks that we see in place where people are making that improvement journey with PACE? A stable, ambitious, child-centered leadership team, not just the DCS, but the whole chief officer team and political leadership standing behind the um, leadership team within children's services. We see people making progress where there's value-based practice models implemented well. It doesn't need to be a more expensive branded version, but it needs careful choosing to fit your context, and it'll need practical corporate support to deliver it on the ground. There needs to be a direct line of sight and a shared understanding of the risk that children's services are managing. The whole council has to buy into that level of risk and understand the implications of managing them. For example, if you're working to reduce entry to care safely, there will need to be investment in edge of care and high-level preventative services. If pre preventative services are reducing because of budget pressures, you are likely to increase the number of children in need and child protection ac activity and children into care. That relationship needs to be understood. As soon as the relationship moves to a place where social workers at the front line feel that practice is becoming unsafe and they're being asked to take too high risk in their decision making, then your um, reliance on agency will increase. If partners lose confidence in the local authority's approach to managing risk, they will push more work. And then you get that perpetual cycle of declining in terms of that push-pull. You need coherent structures and manageable caseloads, which enable you to do that relationship-based direct work that Carl talked about and make good decisions for children. 
MASH need, teams need a duty cycle so they can recover from the really hard work of doing that, those Section 47 child protection assessments. Um, if you've got more experienced social workers, they can carry a larger caseload. Inexperienced will need a lower caseload, but it has to be manageable. It's an art, not a science, and you need managers with daily oversight to calibrate that very carefully. It is about the whole council. It's about good back office support for frontline practice, whereas that's the R R HR team in terms of recruitment or training and development, or the IT team. We still have social workers spending 25% of their time um, putting stuff in IT systems that don't well for the frontline practice. And overall, um, you need partnerships led at the most senior level in terms of officers and politicians that deliver um, really strong parenting partners, corporate parenting partnerships and safeguarding pi partnerships. So that approach and that level of managing of risk is shared and understood by all partners. So we don't have a model of a preferred model of practice. We don't endorse one over another, but those are the building blocks that we see making real progress on the ground. And I get asked about um, safeguarding in austerity, and of course we're conscious of the context. But we, when we expect our commission is just to assess practice, social work practice, and its impact on children and families. We all know the cost of inadequacy, reputational and financial, five to ten million pounds recurrent. But what I would argue is that getting it right, right child, right support, right time, is the most efficient use of those hard-pressed resources. And on inspections to date, I've seen a sector that, despite that massive challenge of increasing demand and tightening funding, is ever more resourceful and eager to get the most impact for children within that tough financial context. So implementing it well delivers you that stable workforce, management, manageable caseloads, confident social workers and wider practitioners who are prepared to hold that tough level of risk at the front line. And that leads to an improved focus on the child's day-to-day -day lived experience, but also, I would argue, the better use of resources, a stable and productive workforce, reducing agency and recruitment costs, and proportionate, timely resources, intervention at the lowest cost and the least intrusive way appropriate to deliver the most change for children. It can be risky, and delivering a new practice model um, or delivering a huge corporate change sometimes takes colleagues in children's social care eye off that core task. So again, I would argue that man managing that change in social care needs to be very carefully considered and very carefully managed. And I won't go through this again. You'll have it on the slides to take away. But we think that these are the behind those ingredients. Um, it is about structures, it is about values, it's all about understanding those thresholds and risks and making sure that you take time in delivering your practice model so that it can be really embedded and deliver that change. Um, I've got a couple of slides which give you some good practice examples from ins inspection. I know you're getting hungry, so I'm not going to read them out, but I will just say a couple of words. You know, so Leeds, um, one of their key... Um, bits of their model is family group conferencing. That brings a family, the wider family, around the child sooner in the process and is more likely to deliver um, safe rehab if the child has an, an episode of care or maybe um, enable them not to be taken into care and for the improvements to be made while they're located within their family. North Yorkshire work is child-centred and there's a long-standing, clearly embedded model. The relationship model enables direct work with families that deliver lasting change, preventing children re-entry into the care system, enabling families to manage their children at home safely. Bexley also have a family-based relationship work, starting with that whole family network, maintaining and returning more children to the family safely. So they have a very low rate of children in care, for a similar local authority. They've done it through investing in prevention that keeps children at home. And East Sussex, a model of connected practice, which has been rolled out and embedded, again resulting in those trusting and enduring relationships that enable children to stay home safely. So having spent 30 years in local authorities and nearly 10 years as a DCS, I absolutely get the pressure on children's services budgets. It's clear to me that preventative services have been hard hit, 
and you very carefully reused and recycled money into the sharp end to keep children safe, and that is delivering the improving picture. I share your anxieties for the future, and we are mindful of the landscape in which we're inspecting. But we hope that our contribution through ILAX gives more regular external insight, preventing the declines which can quickly escalate and cost local authorities dear, both in terms of finances and reputation. And equally importantly, provides the pointers of where we're getting it right to serve children and the financial health of local authorities. Thank you. We have some time for questions now, so uh, could you indicate and a roving <coughs> will arrive? Some at the back. Uh, Councillor Izzy Seckham, leader of Warwickshire, thank you very much for your presentation. I wonder if you could help me in um, sharing your views on the appropriateness of uh, managers holding caseloads. And this might be uh, particularly when we've had a recruitment drive and we've got a number of new and relatively inexperienced social workers. It might also be the case that uh, judges sometimes require a complex case to be held. Um, it, we are getting some mixed views on this and it would be helpful to clarify the position if you could get, share your view. Okay, it's always um, a, a bit of a risk if you ask an inspector and a regulator for a definitive view on something. I, I, I would uh, <laughs> suggest that um, there's always bandwidth for these things. So it is not a good idea for team managers to hold cases. They will be managing five, six or seven um, social workers and their role is to uh, ensure that they've got oversight on the risk and the flow of cases through the system. Now, of course, if we arrive on a Tuesday and you've had a social worker leave on the Friday, um, we will understand that you may have had to do some temporary allocation of those cases. Um, but in terms of structures that give that line of sight and that important flow through the system, as soon as you start allocating to team managers, they lose sight on the risk, but also the flow of those cases through the system will be prejudiced. So, so it's absolutely something we wouldn't endorse um, but we will understand pragmatically if it's something for a very short period of time whilst you're recruiting in that social worker. Were there some more hands in that corner of the room? No, there's one on the right-hand side, my right. Hello, John Cochran from uh, Hampshire. Just a, a, a question about the future of Ofsted and regulation. And the, I think everything you've said has been very positive and constructive and is much welcomed, but it still does feel, as things evolve, as a kind of an us and them binary process. Uh, in the school side of Ofsted, for many years, there's been a very successful dimension to the model, which has involved serving head teachers being part of inspection. Is there any chance that the social care model could move in that direction as well with senior managers? So we do have a number of, um, I think we have 13 serving practitioners on our books and um, six are undertaking um, inspections as we speak. It is quite a big challenge for local authorities releasing the senior managers for the inspections and under the SIF, as John will recall that four week intensity, um, it was very, very difficult. It's, it's slightly easier. But you will also know that there are only 150 lo local authorities and we've got 45 inspectors. So getting, getting the team balance is a challenge, um, as, as is um, managing within our reduced budgets. Although I would never whinge about the impact of my reduced budgets compared to yours because, you, you know, you're doing the important frontline work. Um, but, but we are mindful of that. We're also mindful of the need for our inspectors to have recent practice. Um, experience and a, a number have recently been poached to be ADs so we will be no doubt poaching more from the local authority sector in due course John. Any further questions? No one's asked me when they're going to be inspected which um, <laughs> the answer is I can't tell you. So. No. It's the one you want to know though isn't it? <laughs> I think people are hungry. I think that's it. I think we, we've got the, uh, the shift just before lunch, so uh, 
If there's no further questions, could I ask colleagues to show their appreciation to Yvette? Thank you.